Yeah. Okay, thank you. Brian, we're going to start the meeting. Okay. Okay, being uh, 6 o'clock or just after, I'd like to start the meeting. If everyone would join me for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. Under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> all right. I'd like to do a roll call, starting from my left, please. Mike Ballew. Steve Baker. Stan Nato. Philippine. Lee Howlett. John Elliott. Larry Brown. Okay, everyone's present and two alternates. All right. Open the floor to the public comment for anything that has nothing to do with the case we're going to hear tonight. Is there any public comment other than what we're going to hear tonight? Not hearing any? I'm going to close the, come on in Chief, uh, close the floor to public comment. Uh, we have the minutes for June 23rd. Jen in here? Yes. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, right there. Number, number four. All right. Did everyone have a chance of, to see the minutes, or you want a couple minutes to just go over them? A couple of minutes would be okay, good. Okay, let's just take a couple minutes and go through it quick. Any discussion on the minutes? If not, can I have a motion to accept as written? So moved. Second. We seconds. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, I guess that's uh, five to zero. Okay. All right. Let's get back to the agenda. Okay, so we'll open up the public hearing for tonight's meeting concerning a request by applicant Terrence Thompson of 62 Cal, uh, Cable Highway, Lee, New Hampshire, 03861, and owner of Mitchell Mulrooney of 44 Rosemary Lane, Barrington, New Hampshire, of 03825 for a special exception from Article 3, Section 3.5. <coughs> Table of Principal Uses of Milton Zoning Ordinance and Article 7, Section 1A, Special Exemptions of Milton Zoning Ordinance to allow for a used car lot with no service and a maximum of 15 cars on property located at 60 Charles Street, Map 42, Lot 169, in the commercial slash residential zone. Who will be an uh, applicant here? Thompson, uh, Mitch Mulroney. Uh, who's who's going to be speaking for, who's the, who's the applicant? I, I, I suppose I would be, sir. Okay, so you're going to be speaking for yourself? Yeah. Uh, why don't you come right up? Okay, so why don't you state your name again, please? Uh, my name is Terrence Thompson. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have you basically a summary of what your applicant represents, and then we're going to have a brief halt and then we're going to take a vote if this is um, regional impact or not. And then we'll proceed at that point with a couple issues. Sure. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so the, uh, my, my intent is to have a uh, very small volume, uh, very specialty, uh, very specialty car dealership. Um, I will have a few regular cars to start. It's going to be my first time selling cars, so 
just to have some practice, uh, like a few of more entry level cars, but the idea is that it's going to be mostly right hand drive specialty vehicles. Uh, the majority either imported from Japan uh, or uh, obtained used from uh, current rural mail carriers in the area. So uh, I currently own four right hand drive vehicles and then uh, two uh, standard vehicles as well as uh, have one vehicle potentially available for uh, consignment. So we'll be starting off with uh, with six or seven vehicles on the lot, but uh, eventually getting uh, 15. Um, looking to do, you know, pretty pretty small, uh, yeah, pretty small impact, uh, very quiet, not gonna be doing like, uh, you know, I'm not gonna be doing a lot of test drives, typically with a right-hand drive vehicle, it's not, not something you know, someone would know how to drive right off the bat, so uh, I wouldn't imagine causing a lot of noise or, or trouble for the neighborhood, not doing any sort of, um, you know, repairs on site. Um, with the, uh, the hours would be pretty unusual if uh, and if if that's not acceptable then then could look at opening a few months later and doing more standard hours but typically i'm just going to be in the office reaching out to companies in japan to source vehicles uh which uh, they're they're 13 hours ahead of us so looking to uh to be in the office seven to midnight uh five nights a week and then tuesdays and fridays during the day as well uh, from uh, from 12 30 to to midnight but um you know again for this what the town is going to allow, and we don't have to have customers on site for for the majority of that time. Uh, well, I think a lot of what I'm going to be doing is probably will be Tuesdays and Fridays during the day. Okay. So with that said, uh, again with the pause, um, we have to address the issue of this is a regional impact. Um, I would. I'm going to make a motion that it's not a regional impact. Can I have a second on that? Second. Yes, um, Mr. Baker, second. All in favor that is not a regional impact, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so it's um, uh, just to, for clarity that any alternates are not uh, voting on anything tonight. Okay, uh, so we have a 5 0 on the regional impact. Okay, so at this point, I think we need, uh, under the suggestion of our town planner, uh, everyone, did everyone read the note from the town planner? Yes. Um, there is a state law. And uh, from my understanding, you're aware of the state law? Yes, sir. Uh, that you need to have an uh, office of a building of 750 say, square feet? Square yeah. feet. Square feet. Yeah, that's, that's actually not true. The, so the, the law is 750 square feet or be primarily dedicated to sales. The idea is that the, um, the, you're not selling cars out of somebody else's business. So um, the, uh, the law clearly states or. I was able to find it both in the RSA and in the RSA reference, reference to as well. Well, I did make a phone call on that, and the way it was told to me is it's seven, 750 square foot independent building, or the or rep represents a building that uh, be a multi unit building that you in with someone else. So you still have to have 750 square feet. You can't have an individual trailer, you can't have a tent, you can't have something, uh, your shed doesn't qualify. Um, so, uh, Mr. Boy, as, as, as the building inspector, what is your intake on this? I'm going to go with the state statute. That, that permit he has is just for a shed, 10 by 12 shed. Right. But the state statute is a 750. 750 square feet. And, and you do you read it the, sa the same way as what I've been told? Yes. So are you going to abide by what we believe that is the reading of the state statute? Uh, if, if that's the what's going to be necessary, yes. Uh, with your permission, I would like to try to get a hold of uh, somebody from the state and get clarity because that the, the law does clearly state or, um, and obviously or can be interpreted a few different ways. But it seems pretty clear to me that it that it would still qualify as long as the other, um, you know, the uh, you know heating, electricity, uh, and air conditioning, which we have we have those, um, are met. But uh, yeah, if, if we find out that the 750 square feet is is absolute, then I, I would be willing to abide by that, absolutely. Okay, because it's my understanding that if you don't, then Mr. Boyers will not issue the occupancy permit, correct? Correct. Understood. All right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, are you? Mr. Brown. Are, you, are we in discussion as, as a board? I don't see why not. Okay. Um, the uh, two points, and that would be uh, the ZBA itself does comma I believe comma uh, have the power to set more stringent uh, regulations uh, tied into what I would call the economic vitality uh, and the spirit and letter of the of the master plan. 
Um, second point uh, is that we're talking about the principal uses of the property. And I do not understand how an accessory shed without a principal structure can be a principal use. Well, this is why I went off with this state uh, law, because that obviously the shed would have to be removed and he'd have to build a 750 square foot structure to work out of. And because if, if in fact that he was to say he wasn't willing to do that, Mr. Brown, then my suggestion would be that this meeting would, wouldn't be needed. Because <laughs> he wouldn't get an office in event. It, it <laughs> makes sense to me. So, such a decision would save time. Okay, so. Anyone else, uh, Mr. Baker? I've got, I've got some questions about uh, what you've already stated. Yes, please. I'm curious about the uh, the right-hand drive, Japanese. You think you found a niche here? Yeah, absolutely. There's a there's a similar dealership in Hudson, New Hampshire, and then there's one in Coventry, Rhode Island. Um, there's one in Maryland and one in Virginia. I've actually made uh, a trip to the one in Virginia. They've got over 600 cars in stock, but. It's the kind of dealership people travel all over the country for. I'm a member of a few Facebook groups. And people will drive all over the country to buy cars like this because uh, the, the vehicles have to be a minimum of 25 years old to qualify to be able to be imported and driven and registered in the United States. Um, so a lot of them are, you know, vehicles that uh, you know, you know, people grew up liking as a kid or as a young adult. Maybe something they owned when they were on deployment with the military, um, and uh, a lot of them, especially like the sedans and. Uh, Jeeps and SUVs uh, are really appealing for um, rural mail carriers as they can drive right up to the post office uh, if they work for a town that doesn't supply, supply them with a Grumman LLV, the, the white mail truck you see everywhere. So open the hours that you talked about. Would that create a problem for neighbors because uh, your lights are on or... <coughs> well, we're going to get into that in the five criteria. Okay, all right. You know, I'll, I'll wait then. Thank you. Chairman. Yes. May I just uh, uh, qualify that at issue is whether or not this used car lot is a special exception. The color of the vehicles, the age of the vehicles, the number of doors they have, be it automatic, transmission, CVT, or mouse motor. Is, is beside the point, it is a used car lot. Correct. And that's why he needs to get the special exception. Okay. So what we're going to do, because I'm pretty sure you haven't been in front of this board before. You're right. We'll have a straw vote after this five criteria you have to meet. After every criteria, we'll take a straw vote. The straw vote in itself doesn't necessarily mean you'll get it or not at the end of the night. Understood. But at least you'll see how the board is leaning. At the end of the night, you'll get an overall vote, and that would be the inciting factor. Okay. All right. So, does everyone have their checklist and your notes? So, Jen, I was looking for, uh, what did Jen do? Sure. Oh, there you go. I can see you again. Hi. I was looking for his application itself. It's in, there. it's in there. What number? It should be right behind the, um, the memo from Bruce. Should it be number uh, number six? Five. Five. Number five. It's all in there. It's in front of five. That's the oh. letter that he wrote to get permission, and the rest is there. Oh, okay. Thank you. I thought that was just all Bruce's stuff. Okay, so Jen, I need to ask you that all the fees and everything's been paid, and all the buddies have been yep. notified, and we had the return re rece uh, re receipts and everything. Yep. Okay, thank you. All right. All right. Okay, so you basically answer the criteria in your application. Yes, sir. So you can choose to either just repeat what you wrote in your application or you can, you know, 
say something different. That's totally up to you. Sure. So I'll ask the question, and you can answer the, to the board. All right. So explain how the proposal meets the special exception criteria specified in Article 7, Section I dot A of the Milton Zoning Ordinance. Um, so I believe the special exception still uh, still um, qualifies Meets Town by bringing uh, an interesting business uh, that's going to you know generate the both tax resident revenue for the town and uh, you know new new customers, people that are going to come in and visit my business, and therefore you know other businesses like the gas station or the restaurants or you know, tourist attractions in the town. Um, I don't think it's going to be disruptive to the uh, you know, to the neighborhood um, and. Uh, you know, you mentioned the lights earlier. Something like the the floodlights should really just be pointed at, at the cars in the lot and not uh, not disturbing neighbors and be aiming them in anyone's windows or such. Yeah. So criteria one would be that the specific site is an appropriate location for proposed use of the structure. Okay. So we have some this the board had discussion on criteria one. Anyone have questions for the applicant? Mr. Brown. Uh, do you regard the, the address of the, uh, of the lot as 60 Charles Street? Um, so uh, with your permission for that question, I'd like to pass it over to Mitch. Mitch is the property owner, so uh, I'm just, just working with the information. Well, let, me, let me rephrase sure. that. Is the legal address of the, of the parcel and the driveway entering into it on Charles Street. Yes. Then all signage, all lighting, uh, all display of any potential vehicles would be in terms of Charles Street. And it is not your intention to take the public view shed of Route 125 for a display area. And your signage will be on Charles Street as identifying the business. If that's the requirement for the town, yes, sir. This is my first experience with uh, with op opening a business and, and coming in front of the town. So if if, if that's the requirement, then I, then I, I agree to abide by it. So you have no plans on trying to enter or exit onto Route 125. No, we're not going to make any changes to the to the to the lot as far as where where it opens up. No. no. Mr. Brown, uh, again on the same on the same topic. Um, it is an area used by students uh, walking across. I've noticed. And uh, Charles Street is uh, a historic uh, neighborhood uh, coming out of the springs of uh, the mills uh, and worker housing. Um, Route 125 is, as you come down, will you stop there? Would you propose to restrict walk-through entrance from White Mountain Highway Route 125? Um, if if allowed, if we could we could erect a fence on that side, um, a short wall. Uh, that wasn't something I'd considered. So thank you for for bringing it to my attention, uh, Mr. Brown. Uh, thank you. For the last point you you brought up, it has been disturbing to me, and this is not your problem. Mind, sure. Uh, that several new businesses in this town have completely, and if you've ever picked up the word egregiously, which means basically in your face. Yes, sir. Uh, not respected our lighting ordinance, which provides for extreme cutoff so that the light does not go into, into the neighbors. And that makes I sense to me. Particularly unhappy to find out that your electrician did not get and use a copy of our lighting ordinance and our sign ordinance. I can make sure to make a, an, a special point to the electrician that that not occurred. And if you heard any snap in my voice, it was not for you. No, it's okay. I actually, uh, so as you probably noticed from my jacket, I, I worked for selling cell phones for 23 years, and I hear a lot of different things from, from various different customers, complaints, uh, you know, I've been working in customer service for a long time, but also uh, managing relationships with the customers. That's, they're not always coming in for a purchase. So um, being able to manage a relationship with 
the other people, the other business owners, the other property owners in the town is something I, I do have a lot of experience with and something I'd like to respect if, uh, if, we, if we do agree to move forward. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. I have a question. It seems to me that if you erect a 750 uh, square foot building and then you try to put 15 cars on that lot, there's not going to be no room for anyone, your customers to park. No, the the, uh, the the need for the 750 foot building wasn't something that I originally considered when suggesting the 15 vehicles. So, um, as uh, Mr. Brown mentioned earlier, if one of the conditions that would make uh, make it where the the town would agree to move forward, um, being that you do have the ability to set more stringent requirements than the state themselves, being that you would want the 750 square foot building, um, I would just scale back the number of vehicles and scale up the quality of the vehicles. I would think it'd be necessary because what is the the square foot of the property? Do you know, Brian? I don't. Just one, one more comment. Sure. There's going to have to be a site plan to this too. So all the lighting and all the stuff for people in the It's going to have to go to the planning board. Site plan for the planning board. Correct. Understood. Yeah, this ain't the end of the road here. I, I, I I'm picking that up. That's okay. I think it'll be worth it. That we if this goes through, it'll be part of the stipulation that it has to meet the planning board. The board have any other questions for the applicant on um, criteria one? Mr. Boyo? No. Mr. Baker? No. Anyone else on this side of the board? Mr. Bean? Anyone? Mr. Chairman, we will have more discussion on this point at a, at a later time. If you have more to ask, go right to I. Because yeah. we're going to take our straw vote on uh, this. Yeah. Uh, if, if you disappoint pessimists, things are pretty good. Um, the I mentioned earlier the historical nature of Charles Street uh, as a uh, basically intact architectural gem. Uh, and that I will give you two extravagant uh, statements. Sure. One goes as follows. I live on Charles Street. It's an up and coming little uh, closed community and we have great potential uh, to be a gentrified street just like Freeport. Uh, in L.L. Bean country. The, the second one says, okay, uh, when you come through town, make a right-hand turn at the, car, at the used car lot. Um, I Those are, are the two balances, and I tried to, to make them hyperbole so that yeah, no, I, I, I respect hyperbole. I, I use it a lot myself. Um, well, I think with the uh, with the quality of the vehicles that I intend to stock, especially if I'm going to only have uh, a little bit of um, a little bit of space to put the cars themselves and fewer fewer cars, uh, I I don't think it'll be a comment of take a left at the used car lot. I think it'll be you know or take a left where the really cool cars are. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you. Anyone else? Excuse me. Are the real cool cars the the former Mail cars? Uh, some of them, yeah. some of them are very cool. Like so, uh, um, I have a uh, I have a Jeep Liberty, which is which is, which is right hand drive. Um, again, with the revelation this evening specifically that the the law itself being um, interpreted as 750 square feet, or the the ability of the town uh, to uh, to make the more stringent requirement. I think both both of them functionally functionally equal at this point. Um, the original plan to have 15 cars and the new plan to have fewer than that. I mean, if, if it's got to be 10 or if it's got to be eight, then so be it. Um, but I'll, in order to make that business work, I'll just need to have more upscale cars than originally planned, and they're readily available, so that's not an issue. I'll just buy fewer but nicer cars. Uh, can you humor me as a, as a car guy myself? Sure. Can you give me a Japanese car that would fit in this category? Absolutely, actually. It's, uh, there's there's one that I, I finished paying for uh, last week that I won a Japanese auction two weeks ago. It's a um, uh, 1995 um, Jap uh, uh, Japanese it's a, um, Nissan Fair Lady Z. It was sold over here as the Nissan 300ZX. Yep, yep. Very, very cool car. And that's Dream a right-hand drive? Was a kid. Yes, sir. I want to remind the board we should be taking our notes, and uh, we got to turn into that in late. Um, okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. May, may I uh, um, Mr. Bean? ask a question to the board and, and to the applicant, please, Mr. Chairman? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Brown made a good point. If it, uh, it's a car, and it doesn't matter if it's a cool car, doesn't matter. It's a used car. 
it's a used car, and uh, that is, is is a very important point. And we're we're we're, get, we're going down the rabbit hole of it's a cool car. It's a left hand, right hand. Sure. Um, it, may may I? But it's a used car. May I reply to that? Mm -hmm. um, the only reason I gave that specific example was again because he used the example of do we want to gentrify the street or or do we want to say hey there's a used car lot here. Um, I'm just illustrating the point that the uh, that those those two can be equal. Those two those two can uh, coexist. Yeah, I, I get offsets and I get uh, I get landmarks, but it's right. a used car lot. But yes, if sir. you're if you're successful in getting this tonight, once you get it, it doesn't stop you from having whatever used car you choose to have on the lot. Um, well, I, I'd like to think that that's true, but uh, again, where you guys as the town are able to set more stringent requirements uh, than, than the state is, I, I would suppose that there's nothing keeping you it's guys from used, restricting it's that. It's a used, used, used car permit. I mean, it's, it's, it's a permit to sell used cars. <coughs> it's not a junkyard permit. Sure, no, certainly not. But I guess the question then is just, do we want the lot to sit unused? Uh, or do we want to put something cool there? I'm, I'm willing to put something cool there. <coughs> in your mind, it's cool. I'm sure we can have some people say it's not. Sure. And I, right. I, I noticed on, on the sign-in sheets, there's, there are some people that feel that way, and I'd, I'd love to hear their... Uh, and they'll have the... If there is people that feel that way, they'll have the opportunity to speak at the end. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so does anyone else have any, you have any questions? Mr. Bullio. So it's a recommendation by Bruce Wood, Woodruff, Woodruff uh, to uh, not exceed six... Uh, six vehicles. Yeah, that would be at the end if we, if we choose to give him the permit. Yes. Uh, anyone else? Any of the alternates want to? Any questions? Or any? Okay. So at this point, we'll take a uh, straw vote just so you see how everyone's leaning on this particular um, one subject. I'll vote from my right. Um, obviously, uh, the alternates are not voting. Mr. Brown? But, um, I will give more weight to the retention of the uh, neighborhood, and I would say that it is not appropriate to change the nature of the neighborhood. Okay, Mr. Bean? Negative. Mr. Baker? I see nothing that would prevent me from approving what we've seen, heard so far. Mr. Bullio? No. Myself, I'm on the fence. Uh, I'm going to say yes only because of Route 125. If it wasn't for the frontage of Route 125, I would be definitely against it. So right now you have three no's and one and two yeses. But that's just a straw vote. Okay? Understood. Okay. Jen, do you have that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go to number two. Let me get over to number two criteria. Where is it? That the use will not be injurious, noxious, offensive, or detrimental to the neighborhood. Yeah, I guess I accidentally answered that during the earlier question, but um, I feel with, especially if we're going to go on the lower lower number of cars on the lot, the, the, the kind of volume business I'm going to be doing is going to be incredibly low um, and uh, not not be interested in the neighborhood. I'll be respectful, as Mr. Brown mentioned, of making sure that the electrician follows the uh, the letter of the town ordinances and not putting light into other uh, you know, we have other people's uh, other people's yards, um, and uh, make sure that I'm not, uh, you know, not, you know, starting up cars late at night or anything along those lines. So, um, very very eager to to abide by, uh, you know, being a, a good a good member of the neighborhood. Well, right off the bat, I would say that listing your hours of operation to midnight are unacceptable. You can talk to Japan all you want from your home or whatever, you can be in your 750 square foot building doing it. No one's going to stop you from doing that, but you can't have operations, in my mind, to midnight and expect the neighbors to think that, you know, because if you, if that's not operations, that's doing business on your own. Sure, yeah, I was, I was prepared for that possibility. So, so I mean, that's something that, Mr., you know, <laughs> In my mind, that you can that should have been changed in your application to be right off the start. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a uh, um, give, especially given if a, if to move forward, a, a new building is going to be, need to be erected. That would give me the additional number of months that I would have needed to to be able to try to operate it during normal hours. If that's uh, if that's what's going to happen. Right. I I mean, lighting is definitely a big thing. You have houses 
pretty much on two sides of you. You have the apartment building on the other side, that, right on top of you, the old fire station. I mean, you're, you're going to have to be real cautious on the lighting. Um, noise, again. Uh, anyone else have anything to talk on this subject? I agree, I, with you. I agree with you, Mr. Chairman. The hours of operation are just not acceptable. Good. Yeah, not just with that neighborhood. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, agreed. That that's uh, that that'll be adjusted then. So, when you talked about the scale of the build, your, your business, yes, uh, based on your experience with the right-hand drive market. By the way, I had a right-hand drive car once when I was younger. Too, awesome. And I loved it. So, but um, if you have eight cars on your lot, let's just use that. Sure. Lot, yeah. What do you expect the volume of uh, of sales is? Probably one a month. So you're going to sell one a month, so how many, about approximately how many people would you expect to come to your business to, to look and peruse and maybe test drive? Um, so again, I probably won't be allowing a lot of test drives just because of the fact that not a lot of people are going to have any sort of experience with right-hand drive right off the bat. Um, but uh, I, I guess I don't have an answer for you on that yet. Um, I've been doing a lot of my marketing online. Um, there's going to be a lot of people that just buy the car and have it shipped to sight unseen. I mean, the, the, the vehicles that I'm buying and the vehicles that my, my peers are buying, are, are, we're doing the same. Um, but uh, I'm sure that like, there will be some interest in, in person, especially if I'm going to be open during the day. I'm just thinking in terms of the impact on the neighborhood. Sure, of course. And, and, and uh, as far as the criteria goes, so would you expect one person a week to show up, two people a week? I, I mean, I, I, would, I would hope to see probably a couple people a day. A couple people a day. I think at first you're going to see people curious. There's something different. Yeah. Let's check it out type attitude. Mm -hmm. But then it'll level off. But if it happens. Mr. Baker? How about, uh, will there be, these cars have prices on the window? Yes, so sir. So people driving by might say, wow, maybe I should stop in and talk about this yeah the legally legally they need to be clearly marked as for sale so i intend to have the prices on the window yeah okay all right anyone else any questions so again the hours of operation you expect to have people do test drives within this opera this uh this uh, area of uh, your hours of operation the hours of operation based on your uh, based on your statement earlier um, we are going to have to be changed entirely to, to normal hours of operation. And given that it's going to take a number of months to have a correct size building built, that'll give me plenty of time to prepare for doing so. Um, so that, that, that we can have it all occur during you know, normal, normal nine to five. Um, and we can you know, rewrite or come back in front of you guys with the updated information as the, as the building's erected if you decide to let me go forward. So what was your mindset when you, you, you proposed these uh, operating hours? I'm to do business primarily um, Tuesday and Friday in person. 13 hours ahead of? Yeah, um, so basically spending a lot of time on the phone with uh, you know, dealerships in Japan, shippers, um, you know, maybe consulting with people over the phone or over the internet. But uh, you know, again, if, if that model's not going to fit the town's needs, then I'm, I'm, I'm willing to adjust it to make it do so. Welcome. Anyone else have any questions? Yeah. Mr. Brown. Oh, well, uh, I would like to agree uh, that uh, the small number of, uh, of vehicles will not be injurious. Uh, they, uh, unless they were a Fiat 600 that I own, uh, not noxious or offensive, um, I'm still detrimental to the neighborhood. And I would like to, to push that. I am in slight disagreement with the chair uh, because it bothers me that the business, which is on Charles Street, uh, plans to do the blue shed uh, and the uh, uh, signage in, in the windows and the whatever. Uh, and I suspect that the cars themselves will probably face Route 125 rather than uh, Charles Street. Uh, based on your statement earlier, I, the, uh, then that would not be the case. So if if, if the if the um, 
with a legal business address being on Charles Street. If the car is in pricing, we need to face Charles Street, they'll do so. Um, what I um, need to uh, address uh, goes back to, um, I'm sorry, you probably can't hear me. I talk too quietly. Uh, You're okay. Let me, let me move farther back. Um, I just had uh, flu and, and booster both. Who knows where I was? Um, the town planner, uh, Bruce uh, Woodruff, uh, and I over the, over the years have had conversations about the value of those, the economic value to the town, a town, uh, of businesses which primarily sell equipment and vehicles which either do or do not require registration through the state. And it is his impression, which I think I mentioned fairly, that this particular kind of operation, a used car lot, is the lowest added value to town revenues. <coughs> it has no employees. Uh, it does not add employees. Um, in an unspecified township, uh, groups had to work very hard to prevent a national company from putting up a simple disposable steel building and require bricks and mortar so that when they decided to leave, the town was not left with a tax liability. So a used car lot, as good as it as may be, um, is a low tax value uh, to the town. Uh, it does not particularly encourage the amplification, the addition of people coming in to use other goods and services. So, and, and there is no getting around it. Uh, even the nicest group of, uh, of snow plows at the edge of the road looks like a lot of sheet metal waiting to rust. Understood. And so that is the, 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 the definite that I have seen. Sure, I think those are valid arguments. Uh, it, uh, with, with all those things in mind, uh, I, I guess I'd ask, I would ask that we move forward to the, uh, uh, to the other questions then. Uh, Mr. Bean has a question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm looking online, uh, I've visited the site, and uh, it, it's hard to convince me that a used car lot is consistent with the beauty of that neighborhood. And uh, I've got nothing against used cars. I own a bunch of them. Sure, of course. Uh, and I'm concerned about uh, we're on number two uh, that the requested use will not be injurious, noxious, offensive. I'm concerned about uh, noise pollution. I'm concerned about used cars that need to be jump started. I'm concerned about um, hazardous substances from used cars. And uh, this is a residential neighborhood. On the summertime, if it's hot, if it's uh, if it's springtime and windows are down, and cars are running, um, I, how would you respond to the to that? What I am asking and what, sure. what I'm opining that it's inconsistent and in that uh, it is injurious and it is detrimental and it it is polluting. Um, I, I could come back in front of you guys with uh, perhaps um, testimonials from. Other, perhaps other, you know, if I were to find other car dealerships that have opened near residential areas from, you know, the dealerships themselves and or people that live around it with things that they've they've found. Uh, I'll talk to the, you know, whatever the New Hampshire version of the EPA is to ask if there's anything that I need to be doing to ensure the safety of the groundwater, uh, et cetera, on the property. Um, as far as the noise pollution, again, I, I don't think these cars are going to be getting started up very often other than me, myself driving them, which would be no different from if I lived there. And, and, and you, you understand that this is granted, it's granted to the property, not to you, to the business. It is a used car, and that gives you tremendous leeway. It gives you tremendous freedom to put any kind of used car you want in there. Yeah, you mentioned that before, um, and, and I understand. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Anyone else? This, Brian, this is commercial residential. <coughs> That's the problem with this. And so that's okay, why he's so going to okay. go. It's allowed. And he's allowed to, to apply. I with the special exception, he yeah. can get it, yes. Yeah, this is the problem with that mixed the zoning like that. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Mr. Uh, Brown. Would the board be interested in a quick review of the history of that triangle? Uh, uh, 
I don't know if it's really necessary. Okay. Um, anyone else with any remarks or questions? No? All right, let's take our straw vote. We'll take uh, from the left. Mr. Bullio? Uh, yes, meaning that it is injurious, noxious, offensive. Oh, so, so, so it's not, you're not in favor, so it'll be a no. All right. Uh, no. So, I'm, Mr. In, I'm in favor of it. So, Mr. Bean? I, I find the answer to number two is that it will be injurious, noxious, offensive. So, so you're not in favor, so no. Okay, Mr. Brown? Uh, that is a, uh, a no vote because one fourth, I am less bothered by the injurious part, but the, the detrimental stuff carries. I vote with Mr. Bean, uh, no. Okay, so the only way I, I'm getting on the fence, but with your, I gotta recommend you, I'm, I gotta say that your willingness to work with us with whatever we recommend, I wanna say thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Because the only way I'm even thinking about saying yes on this is because you're willing to change hours and so forth. Yeah, this is something I'm really passionate about. It's something I've been interested in for over so a decade. So I'm gonna say yes under the terms that would be that your hours would be like Monday through Friday, nine to five, yeah. Saturday, nine to noon, no Sundays. Yeah, I, I wasn't planning on working Sundays, so that would something right, so like I'm that. I'm gonna say on a straw you. vote, yes. So we have two yeses and three noes again. You got that, Jen? Mm -hmm. Okay, number three. The, the requested use will not have undue nuisance or serious hazard to pedestrian or vehicular traffic, including the location and design of access ways and off-street parking. Yeah, so the nice thing about the car lot is that the parking is not off-street, it is, it is on the car lot. So we'd have, um, you know, three three spots or so for customer parking. Although I doubt all three would ever be necessary, um, and then um, you know, I have the vehicles on the lot itself. So as far as cars coming and going, I mean, we're next to 125, obviously. But someone turning on to Charles and then turning on to into the lot is, I mean, you've got a, not even 100 feet total from the road, so they're not going to be traveling up and down Charles Street to, to get to the lot. It doesn't really make sense for them to do anything other than turn right in from 125 and then into the onto Charles and then into the lot there. So I don't think that that's going to be injurious whatsoever. Anyone from the board questions? Anything? Mr. Bullio? No. Mr. Baker? No. Mr. Bean? Negative. Any, uh, John Lee? Mr. Brown? Sir. But, uh, what? Um, are you asking for my, my opinion vote on number three? Questions, remarks, anything? Um, uh, remarks. Uh, the, the first time I, uh, I shifted my Fiat uh, 600, uh, my arm dropped and the steering wheel, which is three and a half turns, uh, sent me into the other lane uh, of traffic. Uh, uh, the closest thing here uh, <laughs> would be the hazard to uh, pedestrians and vehicles by an untutored uh, person. Yeah, and again, my, my intent's not to let somebody who has no experience with right-hand drive test drive the vehicles. Uh, the unusual nature of the vehicles, their rarity, uh, people that are interested in purchasing them are, are much more willing than normal to purchase the vehicle without having driven them. Uh, would you like a throwaway question? I don't mind. What is the left side of the right-hand drive car? It's a passenger seat. Left is left. It's nicely done. Thank you. Okay, so let's take a straw vote. We'll start from uh, my right, Mr. Um, Brown. I, w I will put a yes on this. Mr. Bean? Uh, I say no. Mr. Baker? Yes. Mr. Bullio? I'm answering the question now, so it's not coming from the heart of the neighborhood, what he's explaining, but I'm going to have to say yes. And I'll say yes. So we got four yeses and one no, Jen. Okay, number four, that adequate and appropriate facilities and utilities will be provided to ensure the proper operation of the proposed use and structure so that the use will not be contrary to the public health, safety, or welfare. Where did Brian go? You left? Yes, he did. Yeah. So I guess the question I would have for Brian is... He's standing right there. Brian? Brian. <coughs> Brian. 
Number four would have to do with you. That the adequate and appropriate facilities and utilities would be provided to ensure that the proper operations of the proposed use and structure so that the use will not be contrary to the public health, safety, or welfare. What, a, what would he be required to have in a 750 square foot building? If there's no supplied water, nothing. He doesn't have, even though the town has it there. Yep. But he, he also put a party, put a party over the hand wash station. That's all that'd be required. Yeah, as long as the water's not hooked up. But he's got sewer water there. Yes, it's available to him. Yes. Okay, so what is your plans on that? Um, again, given that now that there would be a 750 square foot building, if um, if to get it approved, it, if it needs to have running water and uh, and direction, that's You just fine. heard from the building inspector, it yeah. does not. Well, I and I respect that it doesn't need it from the building inspector, but given the fact that you guys have been so flexible with me, I want to try and do the same. So if it's something that we decide to move forward for with, and you guys say I don't want a porta potty on that on that property, um, then then if it's required, then I'm willing to put a bathroom in it. We don't have authority to to step on Brian at all. First of all, and we don't have authority to tell you that as far as the health uh, on that, those terms. We have other authority to put stipulations in, into an approval if we approve. Sure. But, um, so then let's say in the spirit of the fact that the, the, the intent is to gentrify the neighborhood, that a porta potty would not be appropriate to do so in a 750 square foot building, I think there would be plenty of room for a bathroom and it would probably make it more convenient for me as well. I, I think whoever's using the porta potty would probably appreciate using something inside rather sure, than the, the porta potty. Sure, but the neighbors as well. If I, if yeah. I lived there, I probably wouldn't want a porta potty on the property. So, so uh, okay, so that covers that part. But there's uh, there's more to this for this um, for the health, public health, safety, or welfare than just that. Yes. So the, the we've already got the permits for the existing building, which I realize will need to come down. But um, again, if we were to move forward, uh, you know, we, we've got a heating and air conditioning unit. Um, you have the ability to insulate the building, electrical permit. But the, okay, so there's other things that address too. There's um, snow removal. Sure. There's you know you know addressing you know the right away of traffic of the vehicles. You know that's all part of public safety. All of that. How are you going to address all of that? So the front the frontage of the lot um, I included in the uh, what I had submitted to the town that we put put a divider up at the um, along the Charles Street side so that there's only one entrance and one. Uh, one exit from the lot, uh, with uh, with arrows on the on the ground as well, for for to make it clear which side's entrance and exit for uh, for the safety, so people aren't trying to drive in, and, you know, hit each other and such. Um, as far as snow removal, I mean, it's going to be my my best interest to keep it, uh, you know, safely removed as snow as well, so people can get to the vehicles. So, you know, if you want to see a snow removal agreement with someone, or you know, if I need to shovel it myself and salt, I'm I'm willing to do whatever the town is asking me asking me to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want there to be snow up to the cars, so they need to be cleared either by myself or me paying someone to do so. Okay. Anyone else have any questions, um, Mr. Brown? Yeah. Um, as I remember, uh, with the review of another re recent building, uh, business within a year and a half or so, uh, we did not require uh, mortgage planning board require a special plan for snow removal. Um, we basically took it for granted that your insurance company <laughs> uh, would make sure uh, that you complied or you would have no... Uh, that makes a lot of sense insurance. to me, yeah. Um, as there is a, a, a side issue, and that is the uh, town has approximately uh, 400 uh, water system uh, users, and I forget how, how many uh, are on the middle of the there, two, two, two separate things. But uh, every person who comes on board in either of those municipal services reduces uh, the cost to everyone uh, and has, to use that old phrase, uh, some skin in the game to participate in the costs of community. Sure. And that's the, uh, would be an argument uh, for uh, having the uh, water, water in the city. Yeah, that's a but great idea. I wouldn't have thought of that. Thank but you. But we would, we would not require, best of knowledge, uh, you to have a, a snow removal guru. 
Okay. So anyone else? We're not. So yeah. uh, it, 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 under again um, Bruce Woodruff's recommendation, the staff will also have a written statement from the code officer on this topic. Well, that one if, if Brian couldn't make it tonight. <coughs> and it would say you have two two people from the public there. Um, they have to they have to use some sanitary facilities. What are you going to do? I would imagine no different than what any other business would do. Send them down the street? No. <laughs> I mean, are you, yeah. are you planning to put a, a toilet in that, in that building? But, well, yeah, that's what I was. That's what yeah. I was saying. I, yeah. I, I, yes. Now that he has to build a 750 square foot building, he right, plans as well. to outfit it with water and sewer. Yeah. So. All right. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bean? Uh, in terms of uh, appropriate and adequate facilities, uh, tell the board, please, um, what your uh, appropriate utilities and facilities will be for noise pollution and for um, environmental pollution with uh, discharge from used vehicles, oil, gasoline, etc. Yeah, so. Um I, again, my apologies, Mr. Bean. I uh, I didn't have that information handy. It wasn't something I had thought of prior. So, given your comments earlier, um, it's something I'd be willing to speak with, um, you know, with the state with, and come back with information for you. What would be, you know, what would be considered, uh, you know, adequate, and then compare that against what the town's looking for. Um, I, I I don't have any experience in the matter, so I'll need to do some additional research and get back to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, You're Mr. Chairman. Anyone else? Okay, we'll take a straw vote. Is that Mr. Bullio? No. Mr. Baker? No problems. I'm okay with what he's All right, so yes. Mr. Bean? Negative, sir. So, and then Mr. Brown? Uh, I, I will offer a tentative uh, yes. <laughs> All right, and I'll say yes. So you got three yeses and two noes, Chen. <coughs> Five, that the proposed use of structure is consistent with the spirit of the zoning ordinance and the intent of the master plan. Yeah, I mean, based on our entire conversation so far tonight, it sounds like having a, an actual building there uh, with adequate facilities, uh, you know, and and um, uh, the fact that it is already a you know hybrid commercial zone with uh, with residential. I, I think that that is a perfect use of the property. Um, I think that you know that's kind of been what the whole the whole conversation has been about thus far. But um, the uh, giving permission to to sell cars there and put a a full you know fully outfitted building, I think that's going to give it not only uh, I mean let's let's say I fail right let's uh, if I were to if I were to fail then, then you you've got a building there that can be occupied by another business in the future. Uh, I think what Mr. Brown had said, um, Bruce's concern was was that you know someone's selling plows out of a shed and then they go out of business and the shed's gone and now there's nothing there anymore. I think putting a building there is going to add value to the not only the property but but the town even if I'm not there. You do realize that if this is successful, if you fail, that means someone else can put a used car lot there. It goes with the property. Understood. I did not know that. But heard that said earlier, but with the conditions that um, that the town planner suggested, couldn't there also be a, We a could condition? put a stipulation in there. It has to be worded properly. Right. You know, yeah. that anybody that comes in has to have right-hand drive cars. Yeah, there you go. Or, or something <laughs> to that nature, so, sure. that, so that if he fails, I'd have anybody to, else We'd have in. to make sure with with the attorney that sure. it's it's not yeah, we're so not putting something that we can't put in there you know sure. no I, in, I understand that but I, I just I, I just wonder if there is a way to, 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 to do it that. probably is but I haven't done it in all the years have you ever done mr. Brown I um, the, as we just we were in general discussion I have something to offer but I'll go right ahead. We haven't got to the point where not this is going to pass anyway, so we could probably wait to the end on that. All right, why don't we wait to the end? All right, so anyone else have any questions and rather about the master plan and everything? Yeah, I, I do, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bean? Uh, 
again, uh, if this this is granted, uh, dear used cars. Um, All right. Uh, in in the spirit of this um, this lovely lovely neighborhood, um, I think of Mackenzie's Farm up on the highway. I think of um, some of these more. Um, uh, recreational pursuits for business that are more tied to the farm, uh, into the uh, tourism and the ecotourism. Uh, what is your stance when one of your used cars needs repair and it's a quiet morning? What are the restrictions from uh, turning wrenches? I think of the Mr. Good Wrench and the Yeah, the, there's not going to be any repairs for facility on site, so the, the intent is to. Um, and it was with, a, with the New Hampshire laws for a dealership, you have to have an agreement on file or have a repair facility. So the agreement on file, I would work with probably one of the two dealerships here in town if they're willing, but the repairs would be performed at their already established repair business. And if the car was not drivable, that would require a tow truck? Certainly. No different than if somebody's vehicle was not drivable, that happened to be passing through. Yeah, I, I have a, I do have a concern about that. Sure. How it, how it, how it is, and, and I've got the, I've got it on, and I've looked at it, and I'm, I'm looking at the neighborhood on right here with the satellite. Sure, so I have, a, I have a problem with that. That's all. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Bullio. <clears throat> Are you asking for a vote now? No, I'm asking I, for your well, comments or remarks. Yeah, I mean, it's questions. It consistent with the spirit of the zoning ordinance. I, I, I hear you about the neighborhood. They're asking the question about the, the spirit of the zoning and the intent of the master plan. I have a problem with the master plan, but I don't personally think that's what the people are thinking when they when we drew up the master plan for that neighborhood, personally. Now, is the master plan for the neighborhood or the master plan for the well, town? Well, when, they, when they, people drew up the master plan, they probably, you know, in my mind, when, you, when you're voting on the master plan, you're voting on certain areas, what you think is going to be in a certain area. Sure. And, and, and I don't think of a used car lot in that area. Because at that point in time, the fire station was there. Sure. All right. So, I yeah. just don't think coming and going of fire fire vehicles certainly would have been more noisy than a, you know than some, some used cars. It's not so much the noise. In my mind, it's the appearance. Sure. You know, it's. I have a problem with that. That's me personally. I'm not speaking for the board. Anyone else have any remarks, Mr. Mm -hmm. Brown? That uh, uh, yeah. Uh, the uh, present uh, apartment house uh, is the end result of Andy Lusher, whom you do not know, uh, grandfather uh, giving the old cow barn, complete with horsehair manure uh, insulation, uh, for the town to use as a community fire station back when everybody worked at the mill uh, and people of various locations came together as a residential community. That triangle uh, was uh, given to the community action uh, program. Uh, and it was, uh, I advocated for it to be joined to the fire department. Uh, I lost. It was sold by CAP for $7,500. I have no idea what they paid. Um, but the spirit and intent of the master plan is for the development and revitalization and protection of the compact residential traditional New England neighborhoods of Milton, including its downtown, and Milton, Milton Mills. The uh, small print in the, in the back of this uh, Bible uh, says that the Z uh, zoning ZBA and the planning board may give light weight to expert opinion and that their personal experiences and the basis on which they were elected uh, has equal weight in the process. That makes sense to me. Um, I live up on Plumber's Ridge, which is part of a great swath of connected farm barn uh, buildings. The next property up, a uh, gentleman came become a used uh, car lot. And he explained how he was going to have uh, classic cars, and he was going to have a split rail fence, and it was going to become uh, a blessing to the neighborhood. Sure. Uh, about a quarter mile up from a 1770 historic farm museum. 
I was unimpressed. Uh, what happened is it became Jerry's Junkers, uh, and is presently a, a nice guy bought it afterward and died. Uh, he was a good mechanic. Uh, when Jerry owned it, he put a 400 watt light beamed across the road and about a tenth of a mile away, I could read the newspaper in my bedroom. Yeah. You had mentioned the lighting of Regences earlier. I, I, I'm definitely interested in abiding by those. I mean, I, I hope I've illustrated I'm, I'm, I'm willing to change basically any nature of the business other than what I intend to sell to. I, I mentioned that uh, because uh, the guy who, who took it over, Bob McNair, um, didn't make it past 68. Had a heart attack. I lost him. He was a great welder, a good neighbor. Mr. Brown, can we get back he to the still had <laughs> subject at hand? car lot because the special exception continues with the land. Got it. And I have to take that position. Okay. Did I bring that back? Thank you. Anyone else, Mr. Baker? Yeah, I think because Milton has a continuing tax problem. We need more money. This should generate some taxes. I think the fact that it's a specialty business, not just a used car lot, you have specialty cars. It might bring a little more traffic to the area. And so I have no problem with this at all. That's an argument you can have for the final vote. But right now, we're talking about the uh, um, criteria number five. So uh, anyone else, any comments, remarks? So we're going to take our straw vote on number five. Let's we'll start with Mr. Bouillot. No. Mr. Baker? Yes. Mr. Bean? It is inconsistent. So it's a no. Mr. Brown? No. And I'm going to go no. So you have five, four no's and one yes, Jen. All right. So at this point, um, is the chief still here? I don't know. Chief Krause, you still here? Would you like to have any input in this meeting? No? You just like to look at our pretty faces? <laughs> okay, at this point, is there anyone in the crowd that would like to have uh, anything to say? Please come up to the, can you, can you sit down please? Please come up, state your name and address. My name is uh, Brett Peters. Uh, my address is 75 Mill Street, Unit 2. It's a condo. Uh, we live directly across the street from said area, and um, I just feel in my bones that something like that is going to bring down the resale value of my home across the street, because who's going to want to buy it with a car used car lot across the street? And that's my main concern. Okay. Yeah. So, um, that, that's it for me. That's all I really want to That's say. the only concern you have? Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. And this gentleman here. Yeah, everyone will get a chance. Alan McKenzie, and I live at 55 Charles Street, which is so the set property we're talking about is right here. I'm literally 10 feet away from it, even closer, like across the street. But uh, I know the the talk is in question about like. That they'll work on the cars on site. There's already been cars worked on site. There's a garage that I believe that that gentleman owns. Nice guy. I don't have any qualms with him, but there's already been cars for sale on that lot, and there's been cars worked on late at night in the site garage that used to be the old fire station. But it's been loud, and you know, I have six kids that live under that roof under the roof with my wife and I, and they play outside constantly. The amount of traffic, people that center bring, I, I, I don't think that it's a good idea for, for the street, for the, what little bit of revenue it might bring to town. I don't, I don't think that we need to put a used car lot on a residential street. Any other concerns other than that? I, I think you guys hit the nail on the head with saying once the permission is given, it, it can be, a junkyard 
And well, it can't be a junk yet. Well, yeah. <laughs> right, but who's to set the, the tone as to what cars are going to be? Well, it, it, the limitations, it were, if, if it was approved, whatever limitations was set would be set. So let's say with eight vehicles, it would all, always be eight vehicles. So, right. yeah. And the lighting, the noise. Uh, I mean, okay. like I said. I just want to make sure you get everything out that, yeah, you I, know. Yeah, I, I mean, at, at most is 10 feet away from the windows, the bomber's porch, the deck, and okay. the amount of kids that cross over from 125, you know, it, I, I just think more than anything, it, it's going to be a nuisance. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Ma'am, you have your up. Come on up. Marcia Doobie Peters. Uh, I'm 75 Mill Street Unit 2 also. Um, I feel like it's going to deface my property value and when we are ready to retire and put our condo on the market that it's not going to sell because of a used car lot across the road. I already have a light that shines in my bedroom window every single day or night um, because it's on the fire station on the 125 side and it's directly in my window. Um, I don't look forward to another one. Um, I don't want the noise pollution. I work at home Monday through Friday. I watched a car come in on a flatbed yesterday to that lot. Three different neighbors have their dogs out most of the day. One dog barks, they all bark. I was in a meeting and they couldn't hear what I was saying over the barking that you could hear through the window without a window being opened. It's a distraction for me and my work. Um, the traffic, I think, is going to be uh, more and I don't agree with a uh, used car lot across the road from me. I don't want it. Okay. Any other concerns? Okay, just want to make sure you get everything. Oh. Okay. Anyone else uh, want to speak? Okay, with that said, there's no one else, and the chief doesn't want to speak, you sure? We'd love to hear you talk. All right, with that said, we're going to close the public hearing. So, uh, okay, you want something else you want to? May I? Come yeah, come on, come on up. I, I hear and respect what these uh, what these uh, neighbors are saying. Um, I just want to make it clear that the uh, the vehicle delivered yesterday was not mine. Um, it belongs to somebody that lives in the building. Um, and uh, you know, again, despite there being work done, you know, in that building on vehicles, um, including mine so far, that by law my repairs are going to have to be done by a, a, a legally recognized repair shop in order to operate business in the state so the repairs on my vehicles are going to be done not not on the neighborhood um, the fact that there's a light shining from the fire department into their their uh, their window now is is unfortunate but probably something we could talk to the building owner of the of the fire department now um, and again I, I've made it clear from the beginning that I, I'm not going to put any lights up that are going to be uh, you know damaging to the neighborhood um, you know, I, th I think it's going to be, uh, <clears throat> you know, again, a low, low enough volume um, business that uh, that it, it is not going to uh, to harm the neighborhood. Okay, so I want to close the meeting. So if you have anything else to say, now is the time. Uh, that's all. Okay, so I'm closing the public hearing. So from this point on, there's nothing to be said other than board members. Okay. All right, so any discussion from the board on anything? Or should we, do you want to go right to a vote? Looks like everybody wants to go right to a vote. Yeah. Okay, so anyone want to make a motion one way or the other? I would make a motion that the uh, special exception uh, be denied with special emphasis on the uh, abutter input. I'll second that motion. Okay, so with that said, Please keep in mind that as we vote, we need to give an explanation of the reasoning behind our vote. Okay? I'll start with Mr. Bullio, please. Okay. Uh, again, I'll mention the, the zoning is commercial residential. So my vote is, is, is geared to a residential area at that point right there. So my vote is no. No. You, you're voting. You're saying... Uh, you're, you're voting with the motion to deny. Correct. All right. So you're, you're saying yes to the motion. Oh, I'm so sorry, yeah. All right. Mr. Baker. Well, based on what I've heard from the abutters, I'm going to change what 
has appeared to be a pretty uh, in favor vote to a negative. I'm going to uh, trust that the neighbors uh, do not want this, so I'm uh, not going to approve it either. All right, so you're voting yes with the motion. The motion is to deny, so you're saying Correct. yes for the motion. Okay, Correct. Mr. Bean. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would uh, offer for the record um, my extensive notes uh, to be incorporated in why I support uh, the motion, and uh, most especially um, uh, what the neighbors have uh, said about their properties and their experiences with it. And I would like to say that the uh, applicant was very courteous and very respectful, and I appreciate that very much. So he's voting yes with the motion. Yes, sir. Mr. Brown. Um, I, I joined with Mr. Bean uh, in denying the application. Um, and that is in spite of several of the points, of a couple of the five points, uh, being uh, favorable, uh, well answered. Uh, and uh, this is one of the most curious uh, in ways that uh, the board has, has had. Um, my vote is still to be And I will also vote yes with the denial, with a mo uh, vote yes with the motion to deny. And basically because I do not believe it's with the, um, I wrote it down here, master plan. No. I, I, I did touch base on that with the uh, straw vote. I don't believe it has to do with what the people were thinking when they voted the master plan for that neighborhood. Some of the members, as you know, Mr. Baker mentioned about the neighbors, what they thought. And I did take that in consideration. I myself don't live in that neighborhood, but I personally understand what they're saying. Um, around the corner of where I live, there's someone that opened a new business, and the neighbors called me because I sit on this board, and we gave them authorization to open, and you know, they have lighting that. Same thing, going in there and they can't sleep at night. There's anything we can do now. So I understand their concerns. But I just think it's the wrong place. Unfortunate that, you know, what's going to go in that lot, I also don't think is enough room. Once you get a 750 square foot building there, you're going to be hard pressed to put any, any vehicles and anything in there. So that that's my my vote. So, as you can see, it was denied. You do have the uh, right to appeal. Um, but if you do choose to appeal, please talk to Bruce Woodruff, our town planner, because there's rules on what you, how you have to appeal. And then you have other rights to, you know, in the state to appeal. Uh, I do want to thank you for being courteous to the board and, and willing to make multiple changes. And, do whatever the board would have wanted you to do. But unfortunately, I just think it's the wrong location. Understood. All right. Thank you, though. Thank you. All right. Um, is there any other business for the board? Anyone have anything to comment on or say or anything? No. Other than that, agenda, have you ever heard anything about next month? Anything coming in for next month yet? No? Okay. So. You'll be notified, Jen will notify everyone. Uh, Jen, you're gonna send out the copy of the minutes from this meeting to everyone to view. Other than that, I want to entertain a motion to adjourn. So, motion to adjourn. So moved at 1915. Okay, Mr. Bean, uh, ah. Mr. Brown second, and we're adjourned. <laughs> everyone passion, passion so notes into Jen, myself, please. Um, you can take, I didn't want the back. You can take everything out of it. Or you can bring it back to me. Passion notes in, please. And do you, uh, you collect the notes you want to Give them to Jen. I didn't have any. I just kept them in my head. No, you've got to write them down. Yeah. Remember the lawyer said? Right here. Yeah, I got to go there. I wrote the first talent. Yeah, remember what the lawyer said when she asked him? Yeah. No, no, don't do that. You have one in here, Steve. Where is it? Oh, right there. Yeah, there you go. Okay, Jim, well, we can hold on to the pen that is. But. Can you promise to bring it back? I'll no, take well, that. <laughs> no, I don't. Write your name on top, too. So then she knows who those they are. Thank you guys very, very much. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity. Okay. Thank you.
All right, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for seeing you, John. Appreciate it. Good job, Mr. Chairman. Well, I feel bad for him. I do too. But and, and I think there's, it, it's a great concept, and there's some other areas in town that today, would, buddy. would work for Twenty-seven. It's just the wrong location. Exactly. And what do you think that building? Do you want it to be? Because um, I have no idea. Oh. Yeah. Hi. What, what's the name of this business? Is this the hotel? Yeah, I get it. Red Lion Hotel. Hey, I'm coming in tomorrow else? night. I'm confirming my reservation, my last name.